I'm Donald Leggett and welcome to this edition of Share Views, brought to you by London South East. Our guest today is Cattle Friel, CEO of Open Orphan, who have just IPO'd on AIM and are planning to become a consolidator in the pharma services sector. Welcome Cattle. Donald, thank you very much for having me. Well, it's a real pleasure to have you here today. Now, let me start by asking, what are orphan assets? They're, 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 they're you know, common in the pharmaceuticals industry, but what are, what are they? Orphan assets are drugs that treat rare diseases. And rare diseases are not particularly rare. There is uh, 7,000 rare diseases in the world. Uh, there's 300 million people with a rare disease, and there's 30 million Europeans with a rare disease. However, traditionally, pharmaceutical companies to approve a drug, you have to do two to 3,000 patients tested trials for the drugs. And as such, in rare diseases, it would be very hard to find two to 3,000 patients for a trial. So 20 years ago, the FDA, and the European Medicines Agency changed the rules because you had 7,000 diseases, no cures, because pharmaceutical companies spent all their time chasing drugs for big diseases, heart disease, asthma, things like that. And they changed the rules to say, right, to cure a rare, rare disease, your trial wouldn't be 2,000 patients, it would be 100 patients, and you'd speed the trial up. And if you got approved, they would guarantee exclusivity, 10 years in Europe, seven years in America. So it normally takes 10 to 12 years to develop a drug, 20 years ago, no orphan drugs, and bear in mind they called the regime the orphan drug regime, but that just means drugs that cure rare diseases. 10 years ago, which is about five years after the rules were changed, you had a handful of rare disease products or orphan drugs. Today, in North America, you have 520 orphan drugs on the market being sold and 180 in Europe. So that's a lot of growth. 56% of all new drugs approved by the FDA last year were orphan drugs. And there's a pipeline of about 2,500 of them coming through. So this is where it's got really exciting. Uh, traditionally, and even at the moment, it's a lot of small pharmaceutical companies pursue them. Because you imagine the cost of a trial, only 100 patients required versus traditionally two to 3,000 patients. So small pharmaceutical companies pursued them. Uh, it's a growth area. It's exciting. And they're curious. So is this actually the hot spot in terms of pharmaceuticals at the moment? Absolutely. It's one of the, like, we've seen Shire grow, grow, and now being bought out by Takeda. It's the hottest spot. If you think about it, 56% uh, of all new drugs being approved are uh, orphan drugs. Mm -hmm. And traditional pharmaceutical is growing at 2 to 3%. Orphan drugs, the market's grown at 8 to 10%. So there's a, a much faster growing market. And where does Open Orphan? You've called yourself Open Orphan. So where do you actually fit into that marketplace? You're not you're not looking for you're not looking to develop um, uh, those uh, those uh, drugs assets, or those orphan assets yourself. No, look, my prior history in this space, I helped co-found a company called Amrit Pharmaceuticals along with Joe Wiley. It's very successful. It's doing well. It's developing the drugs. However, when you're developing drugs, uh, if you're successful, it's very successful. Should a trial fail, it's not so good. So while there, I realized there was a much bigger market servicing the pharmaceutical companies, those 2,000 drugs that are coming to Europe, somebody needs to help them bring them into the market. So Open Orphan is exactly as the name it says. We're opening European markets for orphan drug companies. So that's literally what it says. We're helping bring North American orphan drug companies to Europe. So we're providing consultancy services. Everything we're doing is cost plus, sales focus, revenue generation. We're taking no risk. We just hate risk on our balance sheet because we believe we can build a very successful, sticky, sustainable, and profitable aim listed company by just growing revenues. And a good example, yeah? What, what does consultancy mean though? What exactly, ah, okay. what exactly yes, do you do? Consultancy is basically uh, what do, what providing services, helping these companies come to Europe, first of all, get regulatory approval through the European Medicines Agency. Mm -hmm. But the real piece of work we do, we help, it's called market access, get the product into the market, get reimbursement from the government agencies in Europe, there's 28 different ones, and then help pre-launch, uh, help them find sales staff, and help them find customers. So everything to do with getting their drug in the market in Europe. So you're helping them commercialize? Precisely, uh, uh, that's a better word, the, yeah. The we're commercializing drugs, but very importantly, Donald, we're getting paid for it. The issue with selling drugs is, is it can take a long time. The issue with doing drug trials, if it fails, you're in trouble. So we've discovered the sweet spot is let's provide the picks and shovels to the, the gold miners. And uh, one you, thinks you, of, you, you have a database. Yeah. Tell the, me about yeah, your database. Yeah, the database is really interesting. In addition, the company is going to be a services company providing services. We're not going to own drugs or control them, but we have built something that we believe is equally as valuable. Traditionally, owning a drug was what most people thought was the real value. 
We believe the services are very valuable, but what we have now is anybody who owns or controls the data that helps develop the drugs is, we believe, and a lot of people are saying, it's equally as important as owning a drug. So we have two databases. We have one's called the uh, Open Orphan Virtual Representative. That's really uh, virtualizing the sales process of drugs. But the really interesting piece is the Open Orphan Health Database. And that's we're putting together one of the largest databases of genomic data in Europe solely of rare disease patients. So we're servicing the market, but we're putting together this really unique database that pharmaceutical companies will access to develop new drugs. So let me take you back to uh, when you listed on AIM in June. It was a reverse takeover of a company called, called Venn Life Sciences. Yeah. Um, what was that all about? And why was that your preferred uh, uh, method of, of, uh, of of coming to AIM? Yeah, look, there's two ways you get a public. How you list a company, you go straight forward to a normal IPO, right. or uh, most people are familiar with that, or you can do a reverse takeover, RTO. And a reverse takeover is you approach an existing AIM listed company, and who's usually maybe has run, has lost its way, it's gone astray, and you do a reverse takeover of them. The beauty about a reverse takeover is you have an existing company, you've got an existing shareholder base, you've got an existing listing, but generally needs a new management team and needs a fresh injection of cash. But nevertheless, there's something very attractive about Venn Life Sciences, I presume. Oh, hugely. It's got 14 million in revenues. <laughs> and we acquired it, believe it or not, guess what, for 4 million. Mm -hmm. So what happened there was it lost its way. It should it did 14 million last year, it did 18 million the previous year. The thing about public companies, people can sell their shares or buy shares. Investors lost faith in the company, it was running out of cash, and the share price was collapsing. So we've almost come, you could say, a white knight to the rescue of Venn. Mm -hmm. uh, and the reverse takeover is simple. We go out and we raise money, four and a half million, primarily institutional money. And then we went to the shareholders last Thursday, three votes. One was, do you want to accept the new money? That was a fairly simple one. The second key vote was, do you want to acquire Open Orphan? And that's a share for share. So they were valued at four, we were valued at 5.7, and that's where the reverse is, it's a share for share. So we end up owning more of Venn. Uh, and then the third one is name change. We asked the sh Venn shareholders to vote on changing the name from Venn Life Science PLC to Open Orphan PLC. And at the general meeting, normally when you're taking over an existing small AIM company, there's people upset. Uh, shareholders will vote just to protest, mm -hmm. uh, but we were quite surprised and delighted at our general meeting, 100% uh, support, not a single dissenting shareholder, not a single vote against our proposals, Fantastic. not a single shareholder abstained. So we're really happy, and I think that's been proven out now. And are they voting for a new strategy? Absolutely, and I think even the voted with their feet, the share price post-IPO is up 20% in this past week. We did the IPO at 5.6, it's trading about 6.5, 7. So we're really happy that the existing shareholders and the new shareholders obviously believe this new strategy of basically, I think, this, or somewhere we we're, were going to grow fast. And you've refunded the business as well. You've, uh, you've raised four and a half million pounds. So tell me, uh, who, who's invested in you? Tell we, we primarily, again, doing an IPO, you have two options. You can go and do retail, and you can do small private client brokers, or you can go institutions. We took a decision, because this was our third IPO, and a group of us in eight years. We thought this time we'd go purely institutions. We didn't need much money, four and a half, five million was more than enough we needed. Mm -hmm. So the predominantly, virtually all of that came from institutions in London, uh, with the ones that are public disclosure is uh, Gervais Williams, Mighton came in. Um, Good man to have on board. Absolutely. Richard Penny of Crooks Asset Manager came on board. And there's another half a dozen institutions who are below the threshold for disclosure, but we're very happy to have them all there. Oh, how interesting. And um, you're speaking to me here today, so it, it strikes me, therefore, that retail investors are of interest to you. So what, what, well, what's your investment pitch to them, and what would you say to them? Why, would, why are you a good investment? Right, what we'd say we're a good investment, we're market cap today is about 15 million. Five million of that is cash, so we have really a, a 10 million valuation of the company. We've got 14 million in revenues, every one of our peer group, Every other company that's similar in this, let's say, consultancy service trades at two times, most of them three times revenue. So for a private client looking at our company, any peer group, we should be worth double. We should be worth 30 million, at least two times revenues. So we'd be saying to private clients looking at it, uh, we've been through as a team uh, through two previous IPOs, all of them very successful. And this one, we're going to aggressively grow it through bolt-on acquisitions. 
and we've a, a clear target two things we'll keep daily liquidity every company i've originally a stockbroker many many years ago and i believe that where small cap aim stocks go wrong they don't generate daily liquidity i have a target in our company they should be we think it should be a hundred thousand pounds worth of shares traded every day some days in the last week we've had a lot more than that so we're going to try and keep that target. Hence, you, you want the retail investors. Absolutely, to buy and sell. We don't want retail investors coming in and thinking they're stuck. We want them to come in, make their 10 or 20 or 30%, trade out, trade back in. So we're going to spend a lot of time over the next year with n extensive news flow, lots of acquisitions. We'll talk to lots of parties such as yourself, and we'll turn up a lot of investor evenings where investors can actually meet us and decide to do a like us, say that they can uh, speak uh, to retail us. Retail investors will love that. Good, yeah. No, I like what my stockbroken hat off many years ago. I feel if somebody's writing a check, or if I'm writing a check in a company, I would like to be able to meet the management team. I'd like to get their business card. And if there's something I'm concerned about, I want to be able to ring up that party. I know they can't give me any information, but it's kind of, if anything goes wrong, I know where he lives. I've got his business card. So I think anybody writing a check should have access to the, particularly the smaller cap companies and hold the management team accountable. You're talking about rolling out a buy and build strategy. So do you have an acquisition, a first acquisition in mind? We have a, a lot of acquisitions in mind. We've spoken to a lot. Bear in mind, we've worked in Open Orphan for two, three years. We funded it primarily ourselves to the tune of nearly three million. And we have, yes, we've got ones coming down. Over the next two, three months, we'll be expecting to announce our first acquisition, which will bring about five million additional revenues. And then we have another one around the turn of the year we'd hope to complete that'll bring 10 million revenues. So it's a company which has got revenues of 5 million and then the next one has come with revenues of 10. How much will you have to spend uh, in order to get those revenues on board? We're going to bolt them on through paper acquisitions. We're not going to go with endless fundraisings. We don't want to be giving away cash. And anybody we're talking to sees the merit of joining up with a larger company, such as Open Orphan, and be part of the consolidation uh, and bolt them on. Then at the moment, uh, now Open Orphan, 14 million done last year. We'll be disappointed if we don't hit 20 million by Christmas. So we're going to grow those revenues. Bolt on five. That You're a brave man, Cathal. Hmm? You've just put that, 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 that out there publicly. Absolutely. Well, and I say people should hold me account for that. Okay. Um, it, how are you going to increase those revenues? Is it not just the buy and build strategy, but how are you going to organically increase the, the, you know, the 14 million and get, get that uh, business, that Venn business? core business performing better? A very good question, Donald. Um, then did 18 million the year before last, 14 million. So the drop off from 18 to four was the companies run out of cash. People were afraid to give them uh, contracts. Our belief now, we've recapitalized the Venn business. It's got plenty of cash in the bank. So we do know there's a number of customers who are keen to give additional contracts. So hopefully over the summer and the coming months, there'll be announcements on new contracts and these are contracts that are three, four, five million size contracts to deliver well over two years. Okay. Final question, news flow. You promised us lots of news flow over the, over the next year. Um, what might that news flow be? Oh, very simple. Uh, new customers acquisition, major customers. Mm -hmm. In a lot of cases, we won't put a proper announcement, on them, but we'll give a color, shape, and size of the new customers. Second news flow, because we're a dual company, we're going to have substantial services, consultancy revenues, profitable ones, but we have the data arm. So there'll be a lot of news flow around the data arm. As we're building that database up, we're building one of the, hopefully the largest genomics database in Europe. And then thirdly, as we bolt acquisitions on, we're going to be acquisition driven as well. So always around acquisitions, AIM companies like to be active, like to do acquisitions. So lots of news flow coming up. Excellent. Cathal Freer, uh, thank you very much indeed for joining us today. That was uh, uh, absolutely fascinating. If uh, you'd like to uh, see more interviews like this one, then why don't you subscribe to London South East? Thank you very much indeed for joining.